All right, guys, welcome back to Natty News Daily Weekly, my weekly segment where I bring you the weekly news of natural bodybuilding, right? Pretty self-explanatory right there. Um, I'm a little run down today. I'm late. I'm tired. I feel like I haven't slept in forever, and that's actually pretty realistic. So if I'm a little bit less enthusiastic this week, a little bit less pep in my step, if you will, that's why. Um but this show must go on. So we got to bring the news to the people. It's what you want. It's what we need. We're starting out with a couple of athlete profiles this week. Kendall here, if you are a fan of natural bodybuilding, uh, somewhat of a controversial figure within the sport this past year, not uh, of his own fault. Um, just dive into the history there. I won't dive into that. But if I move myself out of the way here, you'll see his caption says, an O qualification is the main goal next year. So, Kendall, prior WMBF multi-world champion, transitioned in the MPC, went IFBB pro, competed IFBB, did very well in classic physique, uh, has his sights set on the Olympic qualification and arguably stands a chance, right? Plays top three at the Pittsburgh pro, which one of the most highly kind of sought after titles in the IFBB. So doing good things. Uh, I'm still going to support him. I love his physique. He's a good guy. We've had him on the podcast. We've interviewed him a couple of different times. Um, seems like a really good guy. So I'm going to keep following this journey. I would love to see a natural win an Olympia qualification. You know, can they truly stack up against like the sea bums and the Ramones of the world? I don't know. Um, maybe we'll find out, right? It'd be kind of cool. So I'm a fan of the sport. I'm a fan of him. We're just going to highlight him. Good luck to you, Kendall. Moving on again, another athlete profile here. This Levi Burge, can't really see from the video all that well. You can see the name come across. You might recognize the physique and the dome. Um, saying that four and a half weeks before the Yorton Cup, he dislocated his shoulder while doing dips with 105 pounds. Couldn't rehab it on his own. Wasn't healing. Competed in the Yorton with this injury, right? So four and a half weeks dealing with this injury where he wasn't able to train effectively. Um and has now gotten an MRI and is now going under recovery for that. You can see he put out his MRI report right here. So he's got full thickness tear as well as like a labrum tear. There's there's some issues, right? So some instability in the shoulder, some soft tissues and supportive tissues were torn. Was still able to compete at a very high level. Still brought, as you see from the photo there, a fantastic physique. And I'm, I'm a huge Levi fan. His physique is something that I think is just very unique. When you see him on stage, he just stands out, partially the color, partially the way he poses. And the guy's been at it for forever. So <clears throat> this year, if you're not familiar with it at the Jordan Cup, he had claimed the title the year prior from the reigning champ, lost it again to the reigning champ this year. So these two have kind of been going back and forth, Levi and Magnum, for quite some time now. So it's the kind of question of, was he not in his peak because of this injury? But that also, it kind of talks to who Levi is as an athlete and as a competitor. He could have backed out of the show one. He could have, when he lost the title this year, made this whole big stink, posted about, oh, this and that, and I would have won if I hadn't got injured and used it as like a crutch or an excuse. He didn't. We're hearing about it now months after the fact, only as he enters his rehab, just to kind of enlighten everyone to what he's been going through. So I think it just speaks to his quality of character, right? So moving on now here, a couple federation updates, a couple show updates. This is the fun stuff. This is the true news that people want to hear about. Shaking things up a little bit. First off, WMBF UK, uh, Dr. Chappelle and Steph, they're bringing the pros, right? And this is something we'd love to see. Love to see more pro shows. One, because that indicates that there's a need for more pro shows, right? That there actually will be pros attending these shows, which means hopefully the sport in itself is growing. Um, and because there's historically not enough pro shows. If we look at the US domestically, there is a show in some federation or another in any state on any weekend and normally multiple weekends or multiple states in multiple weekends. You can compete in your backyard if you want to pretty much anywhere as an amateur. When you start getting to the pro ranks, things are very spaced out. And that's even just domestically within the US, right? So pros internationally have even less options to compete. And we saw that with Eric Helms' competition schedule this past year. 
um, you know, had to fly quite a bit to make things line up, to work with a schedule, to get the qualifications he needed. So I love to see the WMBF expanding their pro categories. Um, and WMBF puts on a great show, great production quality, um, great guys running it. So big fan of that. Maybe one day we'll get across uh, the pond, as you say, and see that one in person. And as we move on again, another WMBF update, they're adding Bolivia. So I don't even know how many affiliates there are at this point, but there seems to be just an ever growing number. Let's see if they have it on here. Nope, didn't mention it. It's over 50, over 50 affiliates with the WMBF now, right? So truly an international ensemble here. And that's why the world's is truly a world's because you have just so many different nationalities representing their country and their affiliate. So like to see it, we'll see kind of how that show goes in 2024. And then just because we like to be fair and talk about everybody, OCB. Now, this for our domestic US athletes is big news. Because my critique, one of my critiques of the OCB when asked about where should athletes compete has always been in regards to the OCB that they have not had international affiliations. Because as a competitor myself, my competitive goals are always to compete against the best of the best. And to me, that also has to indicate the best of the best outside of your region, outside of your country, across the whole world. So my aspirations have always been to make it to be a good enough bodybuilder to warrant the opportunity to compete internationally or domestically against international athletes. And with the OCB, that wasn't ever an option before. Now, and this is, it's funny because this is something that Leroy Dan and I spotted on their schedule a couple of weeks ago, that there was an Australia event listed in their amateur shows, and then it disappeared. And now they're making the statement, right? So OCB is joining Australia. Now, that is a contentious country when it comes to natural bodybuilding. There are a lot of, they're just like the US. There are federations everywhere, seemingly. Now, ICN's a big one. W, WNBF just put on a fantastic show with a large number of athletes there as well. OCB is joining the ranks, but I actually wanted to just see quite how many there were. So this next slide here, a little Google. So we've got the Australian Bodybuilding Federation, ABF. Then we scroll down past a little bit of some nonsense. Now we have the Natural Bodybuilding Australia, the NBA, right? So NBA, ABF, ICN, OCB, WNBF, A and B, Australia. I can't even say that, right? But you can just see that this is a pretty lengthy list of natural federations within the Australia. So we'll see how the OCB fares. We'll see what that show looks like. We'll see what the turnout looks like. Now, Australia shows seemingly haven't been to one yet in person, seemingly have a large turnout. So just by happenstance of being in that region, they might have a great showing. We'll see what the production value looks like. We'll see who's heading it, right? We'll see what kind of news comes of this. I'm interested. I'm curious. Um, and this, again, puts other federations on notice, right? Some federations, their big thing was, hey, we've got the international aspect. Now you have others coming for it. Right. So everyone's got to step their game up. When one federation does something right, the others got to take notice. So skip on past that again. Now, finishing up again with the OCB, just because I saw this map and I actually saw this post before the prior post about Australia. I wasn't sure if I was going to cover Australia just yet until they had made an announcement. Um, so this shows a map for all our domestic US and Canadian athletes. So if you want to, you know, come across the border where you can compete amateur or pro with the OCB. I don't like this. Here's why. And I'll be, I'll try and be objective here. If we're looking pros and cons pros, right? I always want to highlight the pros and that would be like pros, not professional. If we are looking at exposure to the general population, Having a large number of shows in general, whether it is amateur or pro, whatever the quality is, is probably a good thing. You could state that a low pro, low quality, low production show would actually harm in the general population's eyes because we want things to look professional. However, general population, it's good to have exposure. So people are seeing flyers, hopefully. People are seeing local marketing campaigns. People are hearing other people talk about it. They're going to see their friends compete. 
and it lowers the barrier to entry, right? You don't have to hop on a plane to go to a show. You can hop in your car and drive downtown to the local theater or venue and see your buddy compete. And that spawns your interest. And now you've gained another competitor, right? So in that regards, it's great from an exposure only kind of standpoint. The downside, this has been my critique of natural bodybuilding as a whole, we're playing the numbers game and not the quality game, right? Because when you have this many shows, and this is just looking at states, many of these states have multiple shows, fall and spring, but also multiple, you know, within the same season shows, especially like New York has quite a few shows because it's a big state. And it's just, when you have that many shows, athletes are going to be diluted. You're going to have a couple good athletes here, a couple good athletes there, a couple here, there, and then the show quality itself suffers. You don't have that big, wow, you have one to two guys that look great. And then, yeah, right. You don't have these deep classes. You don't have multiple call outs. You don't have the things that really cause the excitement. So in that regard, I'm not a huge fan. I would rather see regional shows where we condense funds, which allows the show to be better production quality, better production value, condenses athletes. So the actual quality of the athlete is now higher and makes it more competitive, which elevates the pro card, right? Because if it's an easy pro card win, that devalues your pro card. If it's a challenge and only a few people get it because there's less opportunities within each country, that increases the value, right? So, and I think that's why we see some of these international competitors, um, more so in the WMBF, right? Because we just spoke on the international versus domestic issue. You look at the international WMBF competitors and they're incredibly competitive because the number of shows that they're allowed to compete in or are able to compete in is very sparse. So the one that comes out top dog has knocked off quite a few other quality competitors where when we have... 50, 60, 80, 100. I think at one point, 100, the OCB had 100 shows in a calendar year. Where are your athletes going? Everywhere, right? So I would like to hear some commentary on this one. I want to know what you guys think. Again, this is not me bashing the OCB. I've competed with the OCB. I may intend to compete with them again. Classic physique is where I started. I feel like there's some unfinished business there with the OCB and classic physique. I'd like to claim that pro card um, as well as bodybuilding pro cards and other federations. So supporter, right? A supporter of natural bodybuilding as a whole. This is not a WMBF versus OCB versus ICN versus PNBA. Forget all that for this week. This is about just what is going to improve the sport of natural bodybuilding as a whole, right? I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you like this segment, let me know in the comments, like, subscribe, share. Also, can't tell if you can see it that well, but I'm swagged out, as the kids say, uh, in my new core gear. So thank you, Core, for the sponsorship. Thank you, Core, for the fantastic Black Friday deals that we all cashed in on. Some cool stuff came out of that. Uh, and I got all my pre-workouts back in. I was out. I was out of everything. But I'm back. I'm feeling refueled. Crushed a leg workout because of core. Oh, can't say that. Core fury. Mm, I'm going to end on that note. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next one.